Hi, I'm Ido Vald from the Mila at IDC Herzliya, Israel, and I'm presenting this work on behalf of myself and Dr. Owen Zuckerman. This work revolves around magnet form. Magnet form is a magnetic actuation shape change display toolkit. It allows for designers with little technological knowledge to experiment with movement in a variety of soft materials. In the pictorial, we shared the work process and results of two studios' open-ended exploration with the platform. And based on their work, we offered some reflections on two main themes, empowering designers to participate in shape change exploration and the developing practice of designing objects with integrated motion. Let me give you some context, tell you about Magnet Form, and share some highlights from our experiments and our reflections. In recent years, there's been a growing interest in involving designers in the evolution of shape changing interfaces. Previous work emphasized the importance of bringing designers on board to test their application potential and in recent work laying out grand challenges in shape change interface research, the need for developing uh, tools for designers was very apparent. Tools which allow for construction and comparison of forms, help designers develop understanding of dynamic affordances, and expand their competences, could help addressing the challenges of designing for temporality, integrating artifacts and interaction, and application and content design. As mentioned before, we were inspired by other toolkits that aim to make shape change display more accessible for non-technical designers and other researchers who share interest in soft materials as interfaces, from foam to hair. Extraction of soft materials using magnetic force was used before in other interfaces and builds an earlier tool history for the actuated workbench, which was a major inspiration for this project from its early prototypes. Based on these and the rich history of toolkits in HCI, we defined the following design principles for the toolkit. It should be accessible to non-technical designers, generate uh, movement in a wide range of soft materials, and encourage creative exploration. Okay. We develop a two-layer system, an actuating layer with four robotic arms, each holding a magnet, and a soft material layer, enabling designers to embed magnets in any soft material they wish to explore with magnets embedded in or attached to the soft material. The material properties affect the nature of the 3D movement. For example, this foam with the slid lines which guides folding. The platform was built as, well, a platform, also in the sense that it can accept very simple commands over serial communication, saying which magnet to move to what location in millimeters in its own quarter. This makes it simple to connect to other kind of interfaces beyond the one I'm going to show you now. We built the animation interface using processing, making it usable across platforms. Each of the dots in their quarters represents a magnet within its quarter of platform moving range to which we limited the arm's movement to simplify the control. Moving these uh, manipulates the platform in real time. And we've also developed a method for recording synchronous movements to all the magnets. Let me show you how. First, a quarter is chosen for recording in. Then, once the dot in that quarter is clicked on, a recording starts and stops when the mouse key is unpressed. When starting to record another quarter, the other ones already recorded play simultaneously. This allows for the designers to relate to the other moving elements with not controlling all at once and still creating a very fine movement. Gestures can be saved, loaded, played, and the reset button sends all the magnets to their starting point of the animation. We gave the system to two design studios for an open-end exploration for 15 days. We divide the process into four stages. Installation, initial exploration with free sample materials we provided, the ones you've seen so far actually, their initial independent experimentation period, we considered as basic exploration with custom materials. And we marked the advanced exploration stage when they started to shift into systematic and focused process, developing concepts from their basic exploration. We conducted semi-structured interviews at the beginning, middle, and end of each stage, and asked the designers to document their process following some basic guidelines in a shared online folder. At the end of the process, we had a very diverse set of data from what we assessed by their documentation to be a one to two hours daily with some much longer sessions. We analyzed the data and recognized three themes of materiality, process and interface of the system, and reflection of the results and future thinking. We gathered the most representative material around these themes and reviewed the two studios work again in light of each other's. I'll give you an overview of the studios work, but we invite you to refer to the pictorial and supplementary video where you can find the process of each of the studios together with quotes from the designers and form your own impressions. Studio A are Mayan Fogel and Yoni Chachik. They studied industrial design together 
and now work as a team, mainly under their brand C's. Their work involves physical product design with wood, various metals, and specifically brass. They make furniture, lightning objects, and luxury items, such as their very popular brass bracelets. Beyond that, Mayan does street stash restoration work uh, with metal and bronze, and Yoni specializes in model building for architecture. The installation stage took three minutes, and their initial exploration took 15 minutes, after which they felt they were able to control the system and were ready to go on with their independent work. Their basic exploration stage was very intuitive, working with whatever materials they could find in their close surroundings and trying them out like plastic glove from latex uh, with air and water. They continued with balloons, styrofoam balls, uh, first just a ball and then within a plastic ball for generating a secondary motion, straws and rubber band creating semi-rigid structures with soft joints, and a few paper folded prototypes in various patterns, Tyvek and mixed materials design based on soft paper with polygons of hard material on top of it which was what they chose also to take forward for, for the next stage of exploration. They want to achieve subtle and deliberate material movement to communicate a message, interested in how the folds change the free structure while reaching specific movements that they had in mind. Studio B is uh, Emma Margarita Ernest. She is an interdisciplinary material designer. She holds a BA in visual communications, a MDES focusing on wearables and motion research studies and also studied for an MA in Integrated Design. Her studio work involves mostly performance design and uh, information design. In addition, she's a material researcher in a textile research design center, where she explores applications for new textile technologies. With Studio B, the initial exploration was very similar. She started by exploring movement with fabric she commonly used in her studio, interested in the different movement uh, characteristics for each. But fairly quickly, she moved to a much more a systematic exploration of movement. Influenced by our work process, both with data and working with choreographers, she designed a set of movements and classified them. Then, using a simple material, she formed herself a vocabulary. She tried her set of gestures on different materials to learn about their behavior, and a few manipulations as building a guiding wire grid. She moved to exploring more advanced directions, such as using mixed materials for characterizing movement or functional elements like rising buttons in a textile, forming a narrative, and combining these with uh, projections as a storytelling method. Following her exploration process, she created a graphic reflection of how she saw her process. After the experimentation, she wanted to keep the platform for a longer period. She was interested in developing a method that will allow her to design the material in relation to the movement, which led her to create several prototypes of a soft metamaterial textile. We separate the reflection to two overarching themes. The first being, what did we learn on designing systems to empower designers? Did our design satisfy our design principles? Did those principles prove themselves to be empowering for designers to contribute to the field? What design guidelines can we offer for other systems? Well, first of all, from an overview of the results, we noted the diverse range of materials used in various ways, some of which we do not recall being used in shape change. It's also apparent that the designers were able to leverage their own professional world of materiality, skills, and personal style in their designs. As such, we believe even our limited experiment with a very simple system shows how it's possible to harness designers' skills and knowledge to inspire the shape change community. Also, based on the diversity, we found the two-layer system encourages creative exploration with flexibility to generate movement in a wide range of materials. Designers were able to easily integrate the system into their practice and routine workflows, from finding place for it to learning how to use it and leverage it. From that, we take that accessible prototyping systems have the potential of finding their place in the designer studios, be used as design tools, and influence designers' everyday practice. We define our guidelines for accessibility to be low cost, durability, small footprint, standard connections, cross-platform software, easily installed, and intuitive interfaces. The other question is, what can we learn about the uh, practice of designing objects which include motion. How could the design process of shape-changing objects look like? And who would be the designers of shape-changing objects? Both studios were drawn to exploration of expressiveness in motion, expressing emotion or building a character. This might be specifically due to the soft and organic materials nature, but could also be a response to the strong expressive and social effects that autonomous movement 
have been shown to have even in abstract objects. Either way, it seems likely that expressiveness and character of shape-changing objects would play a big role in their design. And it's important to build design tools to support expressive gesture design. In regards to working with materials and movement, Studio A intervened the two in their process from day one, while Studio B started by separating the movement from the material and gradually developed the relationship between movement and other elements such as structure and materiality. We would say giving the tools for designing with motion, both in mind and in hand, being able to physically experience and prototype with movement in early stages of the design process can enable creating work where the relationship between material, motion, and expression are tightly bound. We saw how designers' everyday work manifested in their work methods, the objects they decided to make, and how they could see the platform relate to or used in their work, be it architecture or dance or performance. So it seems like there is potential to integrate the system into the designer's everyday practice or influence and inspire it. Uh, but clearly, a longer experimentation process is needed to reveal how it actually does that. So to conclude, following the results shown in this work, we believe designing tools for material-oriented designers, which follow principles and guidelines such as the ones we presented, could allow designers to use movement and potentially other elements in shape-changing interactions as another material in the design work. This expansion of designers' competences can allow for building on their skills, experience, formal and tested knowledge for making meaningful contributions towards the development of the field of shape change. Thank you for watching.